So the criteria for gambling disorder are actually very, very closely mirrored on the uh, criteria in the DSM-5 for substance use disorders. So if you look, the same features, preoccupation with gambling in this case. So thinking about gambling all the time, uh, thinking about, you know, oh, I can go after work today. Um, I have time. I have this extra money. I'm going to do this online. So this preoccupation, thinking about, oh, this is what I did last week and next time I'm going to do this and I'll be a lot better. So you're thinking about gambling all the time. Uh, there's tolerance as well. So, you know, betting $100 may not um, be as rewarding, so you start to increase the amount uh, of your bets. You see withdrawal properties as well, so often individuals feel a, a strong negative mood when they don't gamble. Um, we see features similarly as well with problems with social and occupational functioning, so they may, uh, they may not be performing at work very well because they haven't been sleeping because they were up all night or most of the night at a casino or online gambling. They don't go out with their friends anymore because they'd rather, you know, be online or at the casino or, or things like that. Um, often people are, again, not always lying, but they may be uh, not upfront about how much time or money they spent gambling. So they may say, well, actually, I won $500 last night gambling. And that could be true, but they may have actually lost $5,000. Uh, but at one point, they may have won $500. So, misrepresenting uh, how much time and how much money they spent gambling uh, is often a problem as well. So the, the features are, are very similar. There is one specific criteria called loss chasing, which is unique to gambling disorder. And this is the idea that individuals go back again to recoup losses um, when they've been gambling. So often when they've lost a lot of money, individuals will, at first they feel, um, they feel horrible, uh, and then sometimes slowly as they think about it, um, they feel like a win is imminent. What are the chances of me losing 500 times in a row? Well, if you think that each bet that you place is independent of the last, there's, you know, it's the gambler's fallacy. So, um, so individuals go back and try and win back the earnings. And there's this very, very strong sense of a win being imminent that they've, they've put in so much time and so much money at this point that it's got to pan out anytime soon. So loss chasing is a very specific feature in gambling disorder that we see. Um, and yeah, and, and appears to be unique to, to gambling. Uh, in terms of risk factors, often there are familiar, f familial uh, risk factors. So often you do see people with problem gambling um, in the same family. And some of that could be, there are some um, genetic studies showing alterations in, in D2 receptors in uh, some individuals. But there's also, there could just be a, a familial trait that, you know, you, you used to gamble with your grandpa and, you know, you learned that was the thing that you did on the weekends. And so you can learn things that way as well. Uh, but there are definitely some familial traits as well that, um, that have come out. In terms of social determinants, there are, um, there are studies that look at more the role of the industry. Um, so I, I'm more interested from the neurobiological perspective, but that's not to say that you know being exposed to tons of uh, gambling stimuli, being um, you know shown pictures of people winning all the time and the the high of winning and how great and how you could be a star if you you know went to this casino or that one, uh, that that isn't having an effect on people as well. So there's definitely social factors and um, and industry factors as as well. What I was interested in uh, initially was looking at reward processing in a very specific aspect of reward processing, which is anticipation. And anticipation is important because it usually occurs before you make a decision or a choice. So if you anticipate that something is it's going to taste very good or it's going to be very good, you're more likely going to choose to do that, to eat something, to ingest a drug, to have another drink, etc. Uh, so in the context of addictions, anticipatory prop uh, processing maps onto ideas of craving, which is a huge driving force underlying maintenance of, uh, of addiction and, uh, and relapse as well. So what we found in individuals with uh, gambling disorder, when they were anticipating winning and losing different amounts of money, they showed a, a blunted 
frontostriatal system uh, compared to healthy controls. And what was interesting is that uh, this task that we used um, to look at anticipatory reward processing had previously been used in substance using populations like people with alcohol use disorders and people who were at risk uh, for alcohol use disorders like someone who has a first degree relative with alcohol use disorder. Uh, and what we found was similar blunted frontostriatal processing in the very same areas in the brain, including uh, specific areas of the medial prefrontal cortex, in particular the ventral striatum. And the degree of blunting related to someone's uh, self-reported impulsivity, so the more impulsive someone reports themselves being, uh, the less activity we would see in the ventral striatum. And this was shown across both now substance-based and with the gambling work that I did, non-substance-based disorders. So it really showed parallels in alterations and reward processing between these populations. And since that time, a meta-analysis has come out and where they looked across many more disorders than um, just uh, or multiple gambling disorders, multiple studies in alcohol use, stimulants, uh, cannabis use disorder, opiates, and they all show very similar blunted ventral striatal and medial prefrontal cortex uh, processing when anticipating rewards. So this seems to be uh, a feature in um, across these different addictive populations. I think one interesting area that's really coming up now, probably in the past few years only, is we see more and more fusion happening between gambling and, and gaming disorder. So if, if you know a little bit about gaming, um, there are loot boxes included, um, people buy skins, so that all of these things have aspects of gambling in them. And it's unknown at this point with youth who obviously play a lot of video games, how this uh, impacts them. And it makes, we know that it, uh, it makes them like the game more, it makes them play the game more, it makes them invest more money in games. And so understanding how these features are merging uh, and what effect they have on people and particularly youth is I think a very important direction for the field.